Hello everyone, this is Hugo from Ichiban Painting and today I will be bringing you a little tutorial on how to make rust. I'm going to show you uh, two ways of making rust today. Uh, what I've, the first way is going to be to make rust only for uh, like a, a, rust, a rusty panel and then after that I'm going to show you a way of how to just uh, include rust in like your weathering on, on any kind of miniature that you want to do. So first of all, what you're going to need to do these te this technique, or the colors and everything you're going to need, is going to be uh, charted brown, beastie brown, uh, bloody red, gory red, and orange fire, or any kind of orange. Normally these are the, are, are the kind of colors. So you, the, the, basically you want to start from brown, go into the red, and going into the orange. Uh, I'll also be uh, using pigments. The pigments I'm going to be using is dark red orc and burnt umber. Today, from Va uh, everything is from Vallejo, and I'm going to be using uh, two kind of brush, which are dry brushing brush. Um, you know, like they are already been broken down and they're not really uh, sharp in anything. So the first technique we're going to start by uh, doing ju just a rusty panel. So you want to take your brush and you want to put in some uh, charted brown and you want to go in and into your panel and you want to actually just tap your charted brown into the panel and you don't want to be really precise because this is supposed to be rust right so you just want to go in and, and tap your charted brown in and that's basically it right so you want to go in like this then after that <clears throat> and then wash your brush you don't need to leave it dry again uh, since you're tapping it, uh, it won't it won't really matter. And actually, if you if you leave it dry, if you don't leave it dry, uh, the color mix is gonna blend together. So then you want to go with your uh, your beastie brown and do the same thing. Tap it in the area and give a little less tap than you did before. You wanna leave some some charted brown showing through. Then same thing, you're going to wash your brush out. And then you're going to go <clears throat> in with some gory red. Same thing. So gory red. And you know, like you see, like I, what I'm doing right now is I, I'm still trying to mix it up. So it's not just like gory red. You're going to have the transition. So that's why you don't want to leave it uh, drying because you want the, the colors to actually match together. Also, by not leaving it dry and by playing with the paint once it's, it's, it's on the surface, it's going to give a surface that's not smooth, a surface that's rough. And for rust effect, that's that's uh, something you want, actually, because rust normally is not, you know, the corrosion doesn't look like a smooth finish. After you did your red, you can go in with some bloody red. Pro uh, the thing with the bloody red is that you want to actually, this one, you want to wipe your brush off because you don't want to have too much gory red. It's It's a color that really pops. Another thing that you can do is, you know, just use uh, a tissue if you put too much and you can just go in and, and, and tap it so that the, the rust doesn't or the, the thing doesn't stay there that much. So, and to make it more um, rusty. And then the last step is going to be um, going with your orange. You want to make sure that you don't put too much orange and, and reddish color because after that when you're going to go in with your pigment, uh, the Vallejo uh, 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 dark red orc is already really reddish orange and it's going to actually change the color so you still want to have some brown left. And then you go in with your orange and you just put some orange in just to give it that good look. What I like to do is I like to go in back and go back with um, go back with the charted brown and, and and just put some charted brown on top of that again and some beastie brown so like I said just to make sure that and actually I can mix the both together just to make sure that there's not too much orange showing through that way it's gonna look better once you put the pigments in and again I'm tapping it with my uh, <coughs> I'm sorry with my um, a tissue to make it you know a rougher surface 
So you want to go in and, and tap your Beastie Brown and your Charted Brown just to make it smoother, uh, the color transition, and, and, and make sure that the red is not too predominant and the orange are not too predominant on your paint job. Then after that, once you're done doing this, you want to go in and you could use uh, a wash on top of it. Uh, what the wash is going to do is going to smooth out the colors and it's going to smooth out the transition in between. Uh, so I'm using Devlin Mud because it's already a brownish one. If you use, uh, you know, Dabab Black, um, it's it's a black, right? It's not on. You're working with browns right now, so it's it's a little bit better to go in and and use something that's already like in the tones you're working with. So I want to go in and put some wash on top of it. So the wash is going to actually uh, work a little bit like a glazing technique instead of just being a wash because as you can see here there's no recesses so you just want to put your wash in and uh, so the wash I was using is Devlin Mud uh, a, a, one fa <coughs> a really popular wash from GW and that after that you just want to make sure that the uh, everything is dry and once you go in with the pigments so I'll just set up for the pigments and then after that I'll show you how to do it Okay, one little thing I forgot to mention is that you can use um, chain metal, silver, or uh, any kind of like metallic color. And what you can do is that actually put your brush in <clears throat> and almost go like a, a dry brush and you take out the a lot of silver from the brush and then you just put it in and then wipe it off just so you have a little bit of metallic inside the paint so it really looks like you know the, the, it, it used to be metal you can also do it um, for the transition here you have you know like now it's straight up you know I didn't really care about how the edge would look like but what you can do is that you can actually prepare the area where you're gonna make the rust and prepare it like we did in one of the videos I filmed that how to make uh, scratches so you could actually prepare all the border here of the this uh, this line you can prepare it uh, in the same technique so you will have a, a nice transition between your base color then metal scratching off and and weather and wearing off and then after that to the rusty surface so you just want to throw in a little bit of um, of silver into it and then after that that's when you're gonna come in with your pigments uh, thing that you use, this is, I'm sorry it's in Japanese, but it's actually, you know, um, alcohol that you buy in at uh, any, uh, you know, drugstore or anything. That's that's what you're going to be using to set off the, the pigments, to make sure that the, pig, uh, the pigments stick onto it. You can use varnish, but I like to use that um, uh, alcohol, it, it does a really good job. So what you want to do in is put your brush into the pigments and just apply pigments randomly on top of the surface. I start with the br charted brown pigments because um, the orange is really really predominant uh, the other pigment is really the orange -y color is really strong and I want I don't want to have too much. What the pigments is gonna do in this area is gonna actually uh, make it look like it's 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 uh, it's gonna give it texture and it's important since you're making rust, you know, rusty surfaces are, are have a texture uh, like granulate or you know some kind of granules of 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 metal or they have a certain texture. And with this, you're gonna actually that's what you're making. You're you're making this texture uh, pigments. You wanna you know try to tap them on top so it doesn't look like you're it is, it looks pretty random. So once your pigments are here and there you want to set them so you dip your brush into the alcohol and then you want to deposit on top of it you want to tap it like I'm just doing now you don't want to um, to brush it in because the pigments are actually gonna brush and leave st brush strokes so you really want to put the alcohol on top of it and set it off this is to apply the pigments is the same thing if you would apply it anywhere that's the same technique when you're applying the pigments to another area so you can just uh, you know like do it like what I'm doing right now just to make sure that the pigments are smooth right and then that's it you're done with um, with this technique the only thing that you have left to do is let the the alcohol dry and it's gonna set the pigments 
and the pigments are going to stick to uh, to the surface. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait until it dries. Then I'm going to uh, you know take pictures at the end of the video, and you can see uh, what it looks like for this technique. Now going on to the second technique that I want to showcase today uh, is how to make rust, uh, you know, like little rust spots on an area when you, when you want just to show in so mm, maybe if you like for example if you did some weathering of paint scratching off in, in on this area here on this recess here you want to have some rust showing through there so basically it's kind of the same technique uh, it's fun to use a, a sponge for this this portion of it because sponge applies the the rust really nicely so you want to take in some <coughs> same things in the colors so you want to take in some um, your sponge with sorry I had a little problem with the camera Meh, no more battery <clears throat> so you want to take in some your your uh, sponge and just sponge it out with the on the side of the area where you want to have the rust effect right and then you're gonna do the same thing you're gonna build up your color with uh, from charted brown to beastie brown you just want to put a little bit in and after that <clears throat> you're gonna go in the reds, the gory red and the bloody red. So want to tap your, and you just go in and and tap it in. And then you want to take some orange, mix in maybe with. You can put many colors on on onto the onto the rust. And then I like I like to put brown on top. So it looks more smooth out. And then here you go, you have the, the, the panel which has, has some rust here, a little corrosion effect. You can also put, you can also put some, uh, some pigments here, but it's a little bit difficult to apply. So um, I would not suggest it 100% because it's a little bit difficult, uh, a little bit harder to apply. But this is going to give you a nice rusty color. You can do the same technique on exhaust pipes from... Um, from a tank you use this color technique and then after that you use some uh, some pigments to make really set it out and give the texture that you want for the rust but this is how I, I make my rust uh, it's it's all about uh, how to to mix in your colors and how how you want to work with them uh, you can use darker colors you could use uh, more predominantly brown colors and then just a little bit of orange you can use more orangey and reddish color it really depends rust rust has many kind of texture and colors at the same time so it it, it won't matter the way you do it it's just going to look you know nice any way you do it so I hope you like it uh, I'll take pictures <clears throat> at the end of the video bear in mind that normally when I do something like that I do take more time you know here we have time frame for the video so I, I make sure that my borders and everything are really nice and tidy but uh, you know you, you get the basic idea of how I proceed and, and what's the technique with it sometimes I'm more careful with my color especially especially with the sponge now uh, the way the camera is set up it's really hard for me to look what I'm doing so it might look a little bit crooked but uh, the, the technique is the same and the color process the how to work your color is the same so I'll take pictures when all is dry and uh, I'll put it at the end of the video so if you like it please subscribe and like the video you can check us out on Facebook Twitter or the website and I'll see you on the next video